these classes here. So I want to just say again, Jen, it's really, really wonderful to have you. And it's particularly wonderful to have all of you because you aren't a cross-section of the community. You are a very special group who cares about your development and growth, who cares about the quality of your life, and who cares about spirituality. And we're honored to have you here. Jen, all yours. Thank you, thank you. Since we're speaking of gratitude a little bit today, I just wanted to thank all of you for coming back each week. You all come here, but I learn much more from you than you think you learn from me. And truly, you have all of these answers in yourselves already. Hi, Perry. Hi. How are you? So really, I'm just you know telling you something. You're like, ah, oh, that's right. That was in there already. I just forgot about that. So you possess all of these things anyway in yourselves. But I'd like to get to know you. You know, I really appreciate that you keep coming. And I appreciate Label having me here. Each time he comes to get me here, I say, no, I have nothing to say. What am I going to say? I have nothing to share. <laughs> and uh, I kind of like to speak to the need of the time. So you really draw it out on me. And um, whatever you guys are wanting to hear is really what I'm giving to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be coming back. So please take the time to introduce yourselves to me over the next few weeks. Apparently, I'm doing eight weeks, not five. So <laughs> we'll be here another four. If you'll be here, I'll be here. No pressure, no stress. <laughs> Only if it feels charming to do so, OK? Um, but I really, I ask you, come after class. I'll s always stay in the lobby for a little while. Say hello, share something with me, talk to me, and tell me your name. And, you know, together we can go on this journey. I plan on being here for many years, so I'm all about connection and making friendships. And, again, I will learn so much more from you than you think you're learning from me. Um, let's get a nice long meditation in today. How are we doing with our <coughs> weekly meditation? Are you waiting and saving it up until you get here? <laughs> Is that what's happening, right? You hold it all together. Oh, I'll be fine. I just have to get to that. What day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday meditation. I already feel like it's Friday. This week is just full on, full on. My poor son, he's 11 years old, and he's such an amazing young man. We have four boys and a girl. He's the oldest. He carries the weight of the world on his shoulders. Maybe some of you have seen him. Last time he got up when I gave a lecture here, and we had him speak for everybody. But he came home today in a ball of tears, crying his eyes out, just feeling the pressure of school and then everything he had to do. And I remember being a child. I was quite similar to him. And my mother used to say to me, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen? So you fail. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't have the state of consciousness to appreciate that, OK, so I fail. I'll be OK. What does it matter, right? You still know where the next meal is coming from. I didn't know what that meant. And until you have that nervous system to support that philosophy, you really can't not be stressed, right? We really need to get those stress triggers out of our nervous system, or they will just keep coming. We put in so many units of stress every single day. Remember what I've told you before, 200 years ago, what people experienced in a lifetime, you know, what we experience in one day. In one lifetime, those units of stress that they would experience, we get all of that in one day. I mean, it's just a lot to be dealing with and coping with, and children, I mean, from, you know, the schoolwork, and now their day is from 7.30 in the morning, they don't get home till 5. You know, what are we doing to these kids, you know? It's just all a bit much. So take it easy on yourself when you get to that place when you're feeling absolutely overloaded, and your priority list is up to 100. You know, they always say in India, if you get two things done, that's pretty good. So just... Take it in stride, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, is he better now? Well, I had him meditate, so he always feels better after that. Um, but, you know, he's still wearing it. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. And uh, it just depends on the type of person you are when you're very self-motivated and conscious, conscientious. So you, you wear it, you know? But to be feeling that way at 11, we've got a long road ahead. So we've got to manage it. We've got to manage it. All right. So who's meditating? Who's not meditating? Who wants to be meditating every day? I do. All right, so you'll get there. 
You'll get there. If you have the desire to do so, you'll get there. Right, remember, we want to keep it as simple as possible. Is anyone here for the first time today? Has anyone not ever meditated before? And here for the first time? Great. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Well, you naturally know how to do this. And if I repeat myself a little bit, it's good. Because as you continue this practice, you will get better at it. And as your experience deepens, you will understand things on a deeper level as I explain them to you. Okay. Remember, if you did nothing but sat down with yourself and closed your eyes, you didn't have a focal point. You just sat there and witnessed your daydreams, okay? Everything in your nervous system would slow down. You would experience a deep rest. So you can take it to that simple level when we close our eyes. You can just daydream, okay? If you want to take it up a gear, you can witness your breath as your focal point. Remember, we don't change our breath. We're just witnessing the inhalation and exhalation of our breath very, very simply, okay? And then what will happen is as that becomes your focal point, stress, tension, and fatigue bubble up as thoughts and you'll catch yourself in a daydream, right? You all know how you've had this experience, right? And then when we recognize we're off at some point, then you gently come back, all right? Now, let me remind you as well, I'm writing here activity, level of the mind here. And let's call this stillness. Nobody begins to meditate, puts their awareness on their focal point, plateaus in stillness for 20 minutes, and then comes out. It is not physically possible. Remember, we're not in the business of clearing our mind of thoughts. Okay, it's not physically possible, remember, to use thoughts or effort to clear your mind of thoughts. Our minds are thinking machines, one thought after the next, after the next, after the next. Okay? The quiet place is just a place you can happen to arrive at if you're meditating, but it's not a point to get there. Remember, we can be four places when we're meditating, on our awareness, on our breath, or a mantra, whatever your focal point is. You can be off daydreaming. You can fall asleep. And we have a chiropractor in the room who can adjust you afterwards, chin to chest, right? Or you can arrive in a quiet place quiet place, but it's just to know what it is, not a point to get there. Now, when we put our attention, let's say we're going to use awareness of breath, because it'll be the simplest experience. If you guys want to use a mantra, that's fine as well. You put your awareness on your breath, just gentle awareness, a witnessing of your breath without changing it, right? All of a sudden, your body settles, and Stress, tension, and fatigue bubble up as thoughts. Oh, I've got to go to the supermarket, and I've got to make that, and I forgot to call my mother back, and then I have to pick up the Vegemite, and my <laughs> son wanted egg salad for breakfast, and da 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 on and on, on Ah, I'm off my focal point. Gently come back. Awareness of breath. Awareness. Who's coming for Shabbos? Ah, I've got to make the chalent, and this, and that, and on, and on, and God, this is boring. How long is this going to last for? Is Jennifer ever going to stop us? Okay, back. Awareness of breath. Awareness of breath. Awareness. Now, if you open your eyes, you're taking yourself back up to the activity level of the mind. Okay? We're not pushing thoughts away. We're witnessing them as they happen. The more effortless you can make your meditation practice, the deeper the experience you will have. Okay? So really important. Just allow and accept your mind to do whatever it wants to do. And when you do that, when you go to bed at night, whatever it is that usually keeps you up at night, you will sleep soundly because you already worked it out in your meditation during the day. Okay? People that begin to meditate twice a day start sleeping through the night and they don't have difficulty sleeping anymore. Simple, simple, simple. Okay? So let's do this simple practice. And anyone that finds it tedious, then you really need to be doing it if you can't just sit with your eyes closed and be. All right? So let's use our awareness on our breath or those that want to use the mantra can. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, go ahead, please. Yes, please. Well, first of all, you don't want to do it after breakfast. You want to make it like brushing your teeth before breakfast because <laughs> you don't want to do it on a full stomach and you don't want to do it after stimulants. Because it shuts everything down. It slows everything down. Your intake of oxygen, your digestion, your 
um, blood pressure, your heart rate, everything is slowing down. So to be doing it on a full tummy, you're just not going to feel very good. Um, so best to get up, brush your teeth, find a nice chair, or go to the bathroom, whatever, brush your teeth, sit down in a chair or in your bed as long as your back is supported and your head is free and you can meditate. And remember, if you feel the sensation of your head dropping or you feel a heaviness and your head is here, you can keep it there. If you want to lift it up, you can lift it up. If you fall asleep, <laughs> to the chin. You know, as whatever feels right for you, you'll know best what feels right for you. So do that. Those of you who have a bad back, okay, so prop yourself up. If you need to rest your head on something, then you will. You'll do what feels right for your own body. I'm telling you the ideal, and then we're going to shape it to our own personal experience. Okay? Now, the second window would be you know, two hours after you've had lunch to just before dinner. That would be your second window. All right, you don't want to do it just before you go to bed unless you didn't have a chance to do it. You really want to meditate. So you go, you get yourself ready for bed, you brush your teeth, rah, rah, and then you meditate in your bed. And when you're done, you just pull the covers right up and you go to sleep. Because if you meditate and then you get up and you go and do all of those other things, you will then wake up. And it'll be like you had a three-hour power nap, and you will not be able to go to sleep. <laughs> so best to do it just before dinner time is the ideal time. But like I said, if you feel that you really need to have it then, just prepare yourself for bed. Let that be the last thing you do. Other people that have a difficult time going to sleep, you can do sort of a re re recapitulation of your day. You get into bed, and you're sort of going A, B, C, I did this, and then I did that, and then I did that. And you're thinking about everything, you know, through all the little moments that you remember in your day. And then that'll also help you ease your mind and quiet your mind a bit. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. A few days ago, I felt for me, I got home, drove in my driveway, mm -hmm. and thought, I need to do it now. Great. So it doesn't matter. I actually put my clock on my alarm on my phone. Good for you. For 20 minutes, I just sat in the car. Great. So Fantastic. That doesn't matter. No, that's wonderful. My car is my sanctuary. Mm. I do it in my that's car the all the time, as long as you're not at the red light. It's you know, you're parked, <laughs> the ignition is off. Don't leave, unless the engine is on, don't leave the key in the ignition. Your battery will burn out. I have done that before. Um, so, yeah, of course. That's great. Wonderful. Anyone else? Yeah. What about um, at night? I, I was lucky enough when I was over there that I didn't s sit up in bed. I just lay down. Mm -hmm. So you were meditating while you were lying down? Mm -hmm. If you need to do it lying down because you have a difficulty with your back sitting in a chair, then you would choose that option. But I always recommend, so that you don't fall asleep on purpose, that you're sit sitting upright. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, go ahead. So nice to, you know, question and answer. This is good. We haven't had time for this before. Uh, on Friday, um, I've got two friends that are dentists who have to get their teeth done. Uh -huh. and Mazel tov. Yeah. So I thought in the chair while the dentist is working, it was quite a long time. Yeah. 45 minutes, I was thinking I could just sit there and just Perfect. do med meditate mindfulness and just yep. go and it was actually the best ever. Great. See, you're your own guru. <laughs> it's great. We're going to have you up here. Label, get his number. He's coming here next time. That's great. Fantastic. It is so easy. Yeah, go ahead. A long time ago, a friend of mine said something that stuck with me, and I think it might help. So I want to share it. He says, thoughts are like waves. You don't have to catch every one. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. He said, thoughts are like waves. You don't have to catch every one. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Okay. This is good. All right. Let's get to it. And everybody comfortable? Is everyone able to close their eyes and be comfortable sitting for the amount of time that we're sitting? Yeah? You can keep your phones on if you want to, or if you feel like it, you can turn them off. I won't punish you like I did last time, but <laughs> actually, I punished everybody else, didn't I? <laughs> we'll remember if the phone goes off and there's a bit of a change in expectation, we'll just give that person a hug and a kiss afterwards. How about that? <laughs> I'll require it. All right. So get comfortable. Everyone close your eyes and keep your eyes closed the whole time. Remember, you just want to sit comfortably, not be holding on to yourselves. Just relax. 
Do sort of a bit of a body scan. See if you're holding tension anywhere. We're not going to introduce the focal point yet. We're just going to wait a little bit. Just let that first flurry of thoughts go across your mind. Remember, we don't resist thoughts. We don't resist noise. We don't resist a mantra changing or disappearing if you're using a mantra. We just take it as it comes. Very simple, natural, innocent process. I like to take a few minutes before we start introducing the focal point and just actually be with yourselves. Think about whatever you want. Be gentle with yourselves. We don't push thoughts away. We just witness them. Whatever our minds want to think about, we just let them, right? We don't tell the food where to go in our nervous system. In the same way, we don't choose the thoughts that land in our head. We have a choice in whether or not we act on those thoughts, but we don't choose them. They're planted there for a reason. Just let them be whatever they are. And in a few minutes, when you feel ready, you can gently start putting your awareness on your breath. We're not changing our breath, we're just witnessing it. And you know the rest. I'll keep the time.
your awareness on different parts of your body. So you gently do that. Top of your head. You continue to put your awareness on your breath, but also have the focus on the top of your head. Your eyes, your gentle awareness on your nose, your mouth, your whole head, your shoulders, your upper arms, your forearms, your hands, your lower back, your upper back, your legs, calves, your feet, your toes, your whole body. Witness your breath as we continue. This whole room, all of Spirit Grow, Caulfield, the city of Melbourne, all of Victoria. All of Australia, all of Asia, all of Africa, all of Europe, all of North America, South America. the whole earth, the whole solar system, galaxies, clusters of galaxies, the whole universe, back to your whole body. a couple of minutes. You can stretch if it feels comfortable to do so. Wait about a minute before you open your eyes. Make sure to come out slowly. Let the last thing that happens be opening your eyes.
could have stayed in there a bit longer. <laughs> How did you feel doing that? It's really interesting, isn't it? The whole idea of the cosmic body technique is to move you through self and then take you a bit further out and then a bit further out and a bit further out until you feel quite small <laughs> and then you come back to whole body. But the exercise, if you do it quite often and if you have the time to add that to your practice, you learn to be adaptable. You learn teaches you to be more adaptable in life, not to be rigidly attached to all of the outcomes, to just, you know, let it go, to become a little bit more in flow with the universe. It helps you do that. In the last few minutes that we have here, I always feel like I have so much I want to share with you guys, and especially when I close my eyes to meditate, like the ideas start flowing and I want to talk about this and that and whatever. Anyway, I was thinking that since we have four weeks together, you know, I've left my five children at home to be here with you guys tonight, and you know, you've all made sacrifices to come here and have surrendered preferences to be here. And I thought, why don't we go on a journey for the next four weeks and really take the opportunity to grow and to learn together and to do something. Because the more we discover ourselves, the more we'll be there for each other as time goes on. And maybe at the end of the four weeks, you'll all come over for a brunch or something like that. We can plan something. But I thought it would be really nice. Have any of you done something called morning papers? Why don't you stand up and tell everyone about it? Works. Right, that's great. Tell us your name. Oh, Barbara. This is Barbara. Say hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank so, you did anyone not hear Barbara? Did anyone not hear Barbara? Really wonderful exercise. And for those of you who aren't meditating, you're going to do this, okay? And if everyone have a pad of paper at home, that you could put next. Who doesn't have a pad of paper? I'll get you one if you don't have a pad of paper at home and a pen. Tomorrow morning, you have homework. You are going to wake up and you are going to take this pad of paper, even before you start meditating if you want. You can decide if it's before or after, or you can choose one. But you are going to write. And this is not writing that you are doing for somebody else to read, this is not journaling. You are going to get up and you are going to dump. You are going to write whatever you feel like, whatever comes to mind, and you will time yourself for three minutes and you will just write. I don't care what it is. Write, write, write. I'm disappointed. I'm happy. I'm miserable. I'm lucky. I'm fortunate. I'm thankful. I'm miserable. Life sucks. I don't care what it is, but write. Okay? And then if you have a shredder, you can shred it or you can throw it in the garbage if you want. Or you can keep it, but you might not want anyone to find it and read it. But do this for yourself, okay? If you're going to come here and spend the time to be with me for the 45 minutes we have, let's go on a journey together and let's see what happens at the end of the four weeks. Let's really do this, right? I'm here for you. You're here for me. We're here for each other. Let's see what happens, okay? Take this time for yourself. It takes three minutes. Who's going to do this for three minutes tomorrow morning? Okay? Do it and see what happens. See how your day goes when you take that moment to listen to yourself, okay? But the other thing that I would really, really recommend is that after you do this, close your eyes and just set your timer for 10 minutes if you don't want to do 20. Set a timer on your phone. Close your eyes and just meditate, okay? And watch if you just even commit to five days. On the sixth day that you don't do it, You'll notice a difference. I swear you will notice a difference. I have gotten to a stage where I will not start my day without meditation. There's too much synchronicity that goes on. I think something and it happens. You begin to manifest things for yourself. There's no reason why every person in this room shouldn't be able to have the things that they want in their lives or appreciate everything that they have in their lives. One of the things that I really want to share with you is, is anybody holding on 
to somebody here that they're not forgiving for something? One. Thank you for being honest. Two, three, four, five. Okay, anyone else? Six, seven, eight, right? Nine. Ten. When you forgive, you're setting yourself free. You're setting yourself free. So this week, put your ego in your pocket. Recognize that Hashem made all of us for a reason. God made all of us for a reason. 7.2 billion of us, not one of us is the same, which boggles my mind still today. Okay? Pick up that phone and forgive that person for no reason at all but to set yourself free from it. Yes? Then you close your eyes and you forgive them in your own way. And if they're not alive anymore, they can hear you. They absolutely can hear you. Okay? All right, I have to wrap it up. Let's continue the conversation in the lobby. Okay? I'll be there for a while. Love you.